If I can have everybody's attention here in the media center, we are now joined by Crew Chief Rodney Childers, the crew chief for the number four Budweiser Jimmy John Chevrolet, the winning car in today's 46th annual AAA 400. And Rodney, a lot of pressure on your team, and once again the four team responds. What uh, what was going through your mind in the final laps of this race? I feel like everybody's so far away down there. Um, hey, Jeff. Um, I don't even remember what was going through my mind. It seems like when you get in a situation like that, uh, where you're leading there at the end, there's just so many things that uh, every every lap I would turn around to, to three and four where I could see the center of the corner and make sure the car was there again. And, um, you know, there's just so many things that can go wrong. And um, it seems like we've had a lot of them this year. So um, it was just nice to, to have a fast car and to have things uh, go smoothly today. And, and just, um, you know, how honestly we've made mistakes. And um, and that's something that you can't do as a race team to, to win a championship. And, and uh, it was nice uh, not to have those today. Good deal. We'll open the floor up for questions. Uh, we'll start with Jim Utter, and we'll go to Jeff Gluck, and we'll work our way around. Jim Utter, Motorsport.com. Uh, the last two races, uh, coming in, you talked about a lot of pressure, but the one constant was in all the races is that you obviously had fast cars and speed. Did that kind of allay your concern a little bit coming into this race, or is it still a lot of really big pressure? Well, you know, um, we felt like we had done a good job of preparing ourselves for the chase. And we, we got to Chicago and we had a fast car and, you know, qualifying got rained out, which put us on the pole and and uh, felt like we had the best car in practice. And then we started the race and really wasn't as good as what we thought we were. And and uh, it seemed like the racetrack started coming back around and, and we started getting better. And then that's when everything kind of broke loose. But um, you know, going to Loudon, we felt like we had been really strong there. The, the two races previous, uh, we felt like we were taking really one of our best cars there. And um, really, Loudon, I, I thought we could go up there and, and we could win. And, and I thought that we would be fast all weekend. And and, um, and and it turned out that way until three laps to go. So um, this week was a different story. Um, I wasn't 100% positive on everything. I didn't have the warm, fuzzy feeling. This was a car that... Um, Hadn't been very good before. We had we had wrecked it at Bristol again the year last year, and when we put a front clip on it, it didn't turn out right, and it always took different slugs than every other car, and just nothing seemed to uh, to be right with it. And um, we ran it at Kentucky earlier this year, and it didn't run good again. And finally, I was done with it. We cut the cut the clips off, cut the body off, and uh, said we're going to get it ready for the chase, and and that's what everybody did, and they worked really hard on it, and it. It turned out good in the wind tunnel, and, and even when they turn out good in the wind tunnel, if they've never run good before, you kind of wonder uh, if you want to take them somewhere. But uh, it did a it did a good job for us all weekend. It had good speed and, and uh, came through for us. Okay, we'll go to Jeff next. Jeff Buck from USA Today. Rodney, the, the cars the last two weeks were pretty phenomenal. Um, but at the same time, maybe some teams haven't had to, to use their best stuff. You know, the JGR guys um, – you know, if they were in prime position, they don't have to bring out their best cars. Do you, have you guys, you know, had to use your best stuff? Do you still feel like you have bullets left in the tank? And are, are you at a disadvantage now um, with maybe not the best resources that you would have had? Um, yeah, I think you hit it on the head. I think we're a little bit at a disadvantage. Um, I'm not really sure what those guys have. You know, that's that's um, that's their deal. And and um, but yeah, we've had to pull out um, stuff cars you know that, that we really didn't want to and um you know claire asked me over in victory lane uh if we were ready for charlotte and i was like well we don't really know what car we're running yet um you know so um we've got a good race team we've we've been through situations like this before uh we've got good cars sitting at the shop the car we raced at loudon last week is already back on the floor ready to go if we wanted to race it, we could. Um, we've got a car going in the wind tunnel tomorrow morning that uh, should be good. And then we've got our Charlotte car that we we're planning on racing sitting there. So, um, you know, we've got a good race team and we've got good cars sitting there, but uh, definitely have had to show more the past two weeks than what we really wanted to. Okay, we'll go next to Kenny and then to Dustin and then to Kyle. Kenny Bruce, NASCAR.com. Rodney, I think it was the next to, before the next to last caution 
Kevin was talking about maybe a vibration in the car. You guys come in and you only take two tires. I'm trying to figure out, well, if it's a loose tire, what if it's not one of the ones you change? How do you, how do you guys figure that and make that call? <laughs> well, I mean, uh, we, we, look, we got video on all the guys' helmets. Um, you can tell if it's something like that. Um, you know, we had an instance earlier in the race where a lug nut got knocked off and run a whole field run with three on there. But um, our guys do a good job. They make sure they stay on the, the nuts long enough and, and make sure we don't have loose wheels and stuff like that. And um, as soon as he said that, I, I just didn't feel like that was a problem. And, and um, you know, the guys that um, that are over that stuff, uh, you know, start going over all the, the video and all that. And, and they said it all looked good. So, um, at that point I just blew it off and, and kept on racing. Dustin Long, NBC sports, Rodney, last year, when you guys won, when you had to, is at the end of the season, uh, there was so much at stake. I'm sure that helped carry the team forward. They talk about this being more of a people sport. You still got seven races left after the, these last three races. What you guys have gone through? What kind of an emotional, uh, what kind of an emotional task has this taken on on you and on this team? And how do you rebound to do this seven more times? Well, in all honesty, winning fixes everything. Um, you know, if, if we would if we would have lost today, it would have been a, a downhill spiral i believe and and uh probably struggle the, the next few weeks and uh it is all about people it's all about attitude it's all about confidence and um and um our our group is is good at that they they never waver they they do a great job each and every day they come into the shop with a, a smile on their face and and um they just make it happen and, and i said this a lot last year i i got lucky um i don't I've never been a guy that was good at looking over resumes and, and uh, interviewing people and figuring out who, who the best guy was. Um, I go off of my gut instinct and, and uh, just, I don't know how I did it, but I got lucky. And um, these guys have shown it over and over that they can, they can make stuff happen and, and um, they do a great job at it. Okay, we're going to come up front to Kyle and then back to Nate. Kyle Magda, Race Chaser Online. Rodney, I just want to go back to the last pit stop. I know with the, uh, like uh, Kenny was saying about the, the, the possible vibration, uh, when you took two and then Kyle took four, um, then the next restart, Kyle lined up behind Kevin. Were you getting nervous at all um, that, that Kyle had fresher tires? Or were you pretty confident that he was going to hold him off there like he did? No, not at all. Um, you know, they, they changed the tire this year, and, and um, you yeah, know, there's really not any fall off anymore, and there, you can... I think here in the spring we stayed out with 60 laps on our tires and nobody could pass us. So um, we felt like we had a strong enough car. Uh, we watched uh, the 18 and the 78 put two tires on earlier. Nobody could really pass them. They ran the exact same lap times they did on four tires the run before. Um, and then, you know, that particular run, the 20 had stayed out. He had a bad restart, but once he fell into line, he was faster than what he was earlier in the race on four tires. So uh, we felt confident that putting two tires on it was going to be just fine. Uh, Nate Ryan, NBC Sports. Rodney, uh, Jimmy Johnson said it was a faulty axle seal that caused them to finish 43rd. I, I know you're no stranger to mechanical failures here with valve stems or, or whatnot. When you hear that as a crew chief, what, what do you think of when you think faulty axle seal? How often does that happen? And what is that like to just have that be the thing that eliminates you? Honestly, it's one of the, the things that is the scariest of, of everything that race teams deal with. You know, from the media standpoint, you don't really see that. You know, you think that, that the race teams worry about engine trouble or, or uh, things like that. But these axle seal problems, they happen all the time. And a lot of times you don't hear about them. You know, at, at Martinsville earlier this year, we got done with the race and, and the whole inside of the right rear wheel, the brakes, everything was covered with gear lube. There was hardly any gear lube left in the gear. And um, it's something that all the teams have fought for a long time. Uh, we fought it earlier this year. Uh, we still change stuff on it. It seems like every week we're looking at those things, trying to figure out how to make them better. Uh, over the winter, we actually went to what Hendrick is running. So now that you said that, it scares me to death. But uh, you know, it, it's uh, those things are are, are pretty dangerous. Uh, the 14 had it happen not long ago too. So uh, it's it's pretty scary. 
Any more questions for Rodney Childers? Go to Jeff. I know you're a calm guy, but were you nervous? I mean, did you have butterflies today, or were you just kind of just letting it happen? I don't think I really ever felt nervous today. Um, I, I felt that way last night. Um, the last couple nights, you know, I've just thought about a lot of things, and, and um, you know, it's there's so much in my life that changes from day to day. Uh, I'm lucky that I have a, a family that I do that understands all this stuff, but, um, you know, it's... It's, it's dealing with the person that's on the, the worst depression thing that they could be on to the guy that's winning a race and, and happy as he could be when he gets home. And, and um, you know, you just deal with that stuff all the time. And it seems like the way things are now at the chase, it's even harder on all the teams. And um, But when I woke up this morning, I felt confident. And um, the thing that scared me the most is I looked through every piece of history I could find last night and not one time since I've ever been cup racing was the track temp this cold here at Dover while we were racing and uh, I was like I don't think it's ever going to rubber up I don't think it's going to do this I don't think it's going to do that I don't know if the balance is ever going to change like it normally does and and uh, really uh, my engineer and myself we talked back and forth last night and, and uh, kept watching uh, old races and, and looking through notes and finally I sent him an email and I said look man I don't know what to do I don't I don't know anything to change other than just leave it alone and we'll deal with it so we got uh, got ready this morning and set it up on scales and wrote all of our numbers down and took it back off of scales and rolled with it and uh, we just got lucky that it that it was as good as it was go to Kenny Bruce and then up the skip Kenny Bruce again Rodney uh, Kevin led 355 laps. We've talked before about if somebody goes out there and really dominates that NASCAR might not be real happy with that. How do you think they're going to react to your win today? Well, I don't know. I mean, if uh, if we would have had qualifying on Saturday, on Friday, we'd have led 400. So, um, you know, it's it's just part of it. And we came here to win. We and we um, we're. We're that type of team that um, we don't, you know, when you're backed in the corner like this, what are you supposed to do? You know, we're not going to ride around fifth all day and, and wait to take the lead at the end. That's not what we're made out of. Uh, you know, we came here to, to lead laps and, and to do our job and end up with that car in victory lane. And, and um, you know, it's part of it. You know, we've, we've been over there 30 times, I think, now. And so... Looking forward to going back and taking on breakfast again Tuesday morning. Uh, with WBCB, you were, went back and looked at the records, how cold it was in the past. How far back did the records go? Because I remember the first Delaware 500 here, They it was this cold. Well, that was long before me. I, I just looked through my records. Which okay, because been... I think it was about 45 that day. <laughs> and there was yeah. only, and that day there were only three lap leaders. Oh, really? Yeah, same as today. Gotcha. Um, yeah, I guess back 2003 was my first go around here, and and uh, it's never never had a track temp this cold since then. Well, unfortunately, a dinosaur like me goes back to 71. <laughs> <laughs> Rodney. Congratulations again, and uh, welcome to the Contender 12. I appreciate it. Thanks, everybody.